conversations that we need to have in order to empower our community. I'm your host, Mr. Bray. JP. Okay. All right, and we're going to get started today. This show is brought to you by Turning Natural. Have y'all ever been there? Yes. What did they you actually get? had a truck. At, I ended up going to remember they had the truck at yeah. uh, Rockley City. I they didn't know that was them. Yeah, they had a, um, it was in the line with like mm-hmm. you know the little seafood truck that they had though. But I mean, it was cool. It was cool. You know, I'm kind of like transitioning into yeah. trying to eat better, so I'm still like kind of conditioned to all that. So, yes, so basically, Turn It Natural is a natural food spot. It's black owned. It, they have like three locations. One of them is in 8th Street, and then one of them is in uh, Forestville. You guys should just Google it, look up Turn It Natural if you're in the DMV area. And let me clarify that means DC, Maryland, and Virginia because somebody was in the comments was like, um, all your viewers are not from there, so you need to clarify what you mean. We don't know what that means. DMV means DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Oh. All right, you didn't know. don't shoot us down. It's okay. No right, right. We we are a show for everyone, but we are you know DMV. based in DMV. DMV. DC, Maryland, and Virginia on the East Coast. Anyway, but yeah, Turner Natural is black owned. They have some good juices, like they have the cleansing juices, the natural cold press. Mm-hmm. I love those. I haven't had a um a milk. I mean, not a milkshake. <laughs> That's so fat. Um, I haven't had a smoothie yet, but they are famous for their smoothies and their bean burgers. They have these spinach patties that are like so bomb. So, and bomb, if you're not familiar with our <laughs> terminology, means good. it means good. <laughs> the John was lit. <laughs> right, it's lit. If you're not familiar with right. it, that's was- unfortunate. That, right, <laughs> this is not, this is a show for millennials, so you know what lit is, no matter what you do. But anyway. <laughs> So yeah, Turn It Natural, um, definitely look at us, support, it's black owned. It's, I've never, I haven't been to a place where it's, it's black owned, great customer service, clean, nice environment, like welcoming, you know, decor and everything, and the service, like the food was good, the service was good. I mean, every time I've been there, I had it. The only issue I had was one time when the line was long. And, that's I mean, not even an yeah, issue. That's not really that, their That's a good thing. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I encourage everybody out here um, that's in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area <laughs> <laughs> to go check it out. You will not be disappointed. Everybody's been seeing shows like, I mean, movies and documentaries like What, what the Hell and um, the different ones on, on Netflix. And it really has you reevaluating your lifestyle. You know, Someone say what the hell was that in It's real. Life. I'm not ready to be, you know, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So. <laughs> you know, That's a good way to live. No, I'm here for a long time. Long time. I feel okay. like I could, I mean, my, I mean, it might be a little sideways. I just feel like my attitude is like, I gotta go clean up all my eating habits and then go get hit by a bus or something. Like, I'm oh not my and eat this steak, man, right? and live, you know, and just live it up. But I mean, you know, I don't judge, you know. Everybody who went vegan, you know, behind that whole power to eat. See, vegan is a strong word. I'm still eating animal protein. I'm sorry. <laughs> because vegan, vegan is, is life. Ba- no, bacon is not life. Just cut out pork. At least if you're going to eat it. Yeah. I mean, it's really vegan. just the bacon is the only element of pork that I actually still eat. Because I have maple mm-hmm. bacon from the Amish market. Eat on the one. I'm telling you. Okay, eat a turn of natural. Get your life right. <laughs> at least, at least supplement some of your bad meals for good meals. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to do a show right. about health in the black community for real. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we are, we are, because we, in order for us to be a strong community, they try to put a food desert in our neighborhood and like only McDonald's and Popeyes and our shit, and we like to right. eat good shit too. Niggas not giving up football. They're not gonna give up chicken. I'm gonna say, okay. Niggas, not gonna give up. I'm not asking <laughs> that. Yeah, we can, you can definitely go in and get McDonald's out of here, but I don't feel like any slander towards Popeyes would be accepted. First of all, let's be clear. Not about me. Please, the uh, Popeyes in the black communities be trash. Let's be clear. I don't know. I ain't. All the ones I've been to in the hood been trash. I ain't never had no issues with the Lando shot. Lando with Popeyes had. Like, <laughs> I cannot. But, um,. Yeah, I want to give a shout out. Oh hell, who the fuck? I'm sorry, you guys. Somebody else logged into my YouTube account. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Here? It's a bunch of nursery <laughs> moms and shit for my daughter. Let me switch it up. Um, but before we get to that, so because I have to go switch up, I want to shout out some people, some of our loyal and loyal, loyal, loyal um, YouTube supporters. One of them that I do remember comments and likes almost everything. His name is Eugene Fisher. 
He always comments, always likes, he's sharing it. Shout out to you, Eugene. Like, you're, bit, you're day one. But um, I want to shout out some more people, but while I log in. I got a couple coworkers that be like, um, excuse me. I didn't see no uh, video go up this week. And I'm like, okay. Oh, 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 look at the okay, okay. Let, me think, let me think. Let me think. Who we can shout out. Okay. We Man. Go out. One of my coworkers Please who's do. definitely like very, very faithfully watched the show. I appreciate it. Yes. It's, uh, Antonio Walston. We appreciate yes. your views. Hey, Can you yeah. tell me real quick? Hey. Um, excuse me, but I checked Instagram and... I didn't see I no know snippets that's right, black man. and no link in bio. And I'm like, okay, my apologies. It's I know coming, that's it's coming. Right. But he definitely has supported the show, at least since I've been a part of it. Because, you know, prior to that, he wasn't aware. But he's definitely aware. He does spread the news and tell people at work. He gets up to do a little while. That's what's up. So I definitely appreciate it. We appreciate it. you, Antonio. Appreciate you, you, big dog. Do he have a, a social media or whatever? He does. I mean, I have social media. It's been in my thing. Because all service. the supporters, we want to. <laughs> <laughs> we want to okay well when you get that information then we gonna put that out there but shout out to him um oh yeah so i know we're gonna just do a really a uh, quick rundown and uh one of the things that i've noticed <laughs> one of the things that <laughs> one of the things that i know that i've noticed was kevin hart kevin hart's been in the media right now because he just was apologizing about something. He was being very vague or whatever. Seemed like he probably cheated because what else would you be getting extorted for, sir? But you know, he was recently, uh, remember that in, a couple months ago, people speculated him for cheating because he was in a, in a car with, that, with that white girl. He said he was kissing the girl, but he was like clearly in the front seat. She was in the back seat. And yeah. Right. People just try to make anything. But, Something I mean, yeah, know. that was a little extreme because it didn't look like what people were saying it was. Mm -hmm. However, this little uh, Instagram apology or whatever, you know, social media platform he used, it was like, bruh, you seem like you probably cheated. Yeah, because because somebody tried to extort him or whatever, and which is very it's unfortunate. Like, whoa, big surprise. But, which, sure. but that's just all speculation. Nothing has been proven to be that so i mean i don't know if you guys have an idea of what he might be apologizing for i don't know but well based on what he said he said pretty much that like he feels like he has a target on his back and that he essentially put himself in a situation for bad things to happen and they did and that he apologized to his wife and his children and that someone was trying to extort him for money and he'd rather just fess up to his wrongs than allow them to get financial gain from what he did so the speculation is that he cheated it sounds about rights probably in conjunction with the situation from a few months ago where people speculated which is probably why the assumption is that he did cheat it might not have been that scenario but apparently mm -hmm. he sounds like my opinion that he cheated and that the person was trying to get money out of it or was going to extort him or expose him he decided to you know saying go ahead and Ryan Seacrest himself. And I, think that was, I thought that was smart that he go ahead, went ahead and volunteered the information. He ate miles himself, basically. It's like, I'm going to go ahead and talk about myself so you have nothing to say. Right. And that was smart. However, I don't think that it was necessary for him to do that it on a social media private. platform. You do that to yeah. that Let that yeah. be between you and your wife and your family because all you did was make yourself the bid. And you know how social media is and that power of speculation is so problematic and people are going to talk about it for a while now and there's going to be all types of It'll scenarios. I mean, yeah, but you It'll know people are going to just, all it does is heighten the problem. But it's worse for him because for years Kevin Hart has had like this clean kind of image like this kind of been like no dirt on him for a while. Because it's like when, and that's mainly because when he had the same situation when he cheated on his first wife, you know, he mm -hmm. talked about it in his shows and you know right. what I'm saying, it's like he kind of had to make light of it at that point because it was over. So it's like, okay, cool, it's right. over. I'm going to make light of it. Yeah, you know, basically I know I was wrong, but this is what I was doing. So it's like, okay, well now you've set up shop with your new woman and you married her, she's pregnant, expecting her first child, you guys' first child. And it's like for this to kind of happen at a time like now, it makes it even worse for mm -hmm. him because it's like she's at her most vulnerable state being pregnant and it's like really but i'm yeah. hearing the speculation i don't know how true this is i didn't really look too far into it to corroborate the story but i'm hearing that the extortion came from someone saying that whoever this side person was was claiming to be pregnant i don't know how true that is oh i didn't hear that but i did hear that and wow. in that instance that would make it even worse 
because mm-hmm. it's like your wife's first child she's pregnant she's happy mm-hmm. and she's having to share that moment with your indiscretion is super bad but i don't know how true that is so i'm not gonna we'll, do it right much. we'll we'll see i don't know um but um what was you saying what, you were saying off air earlier about a story that you came across you don't remember that fast Floyd Mayweather? Oh, yeah, yeah. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather. Yeah. So right, explain um, to the people what's been going on with Floyd. So basically, he had an interview. I don't know who he was interviewing with, what it was mm-hmm. about. But there was a clip of him basically saying that he kind of agrees with what Donald Trump said in that video from like 2005. The grab him by the pussy. pussy. Mm-hmm. But, um... Is he sure he can't read? Well, I mean, oh, it, it was... It was kind of like... Is it a video? He, he didn't articulate it well, so he was... I guess he was basically saying, like, it's just locker room talk. I agree. That's how men talk. However, like, my thing was, he was trying to be president. You're the president. There's no locker room talk. Well, it is because, like, I was saying, saying, you don't do that when you're pursuing the president. But that was from decades. It was like from a decade ago or something. 2005. It just resurfaced. Right. And so, even still, I mean, if you recorded all of us, all uh, all parts of our life, we wouldn't be qualified to do shit. Like, that's the reason. That's very true. But, But I mean, you know. I mean, that is sexual assault, but my thing is, if he was, I, my problem was the fact that he was just still arrogant with it. Like, yeah, that's what I said. It's locker room talk. That's right. how I'm talk. And it's more thing, so, like, apologetic. Like how Obama got dragged through the mud for every everything that he's ever said or done or yeah. even things mm-hmm. that he hasn't said or done have been scrutinized right. and put well, under a microscope. You know, that's a gift. And, you know, but it's like he blatantly said this. He owned it. He was, yeah, I said it. He's real cavalier about it. And people are just like, I mean, well, you know, like, no, like, it's, you don't, we doesn't get held to the same standard that we had for all our right. previous presidents. We just keep forgiving these faux pas and this ignorance and this blatant sexist and racist. Of course, he's right. white in America. He's a white she male in America. Right. Well, right. White bitch male you know, in America. Yeah, and apparently, <laughs> a little bit. Hmm? I'm going to be, make sure you know. Oh, apparently yes. that doesn't matter. Like, and it's that's what really sickens me the most. It's like when you you say things like this, mm-hmm. and everyone like, you know, turns the other cheek for this exactly. kind of stuff. It's like mm-hmm. we don't have to show it. us your tax returns, but you wanted Obama's birth certificate and everything. Right. Like it's like really. I think we're just pretty immune right. to the Trump thing. Like I feel like it doesn't affect us like it used to. I don't know what it is. Whether yeah, it's every, every get every it over. we're just so ready to get it's it over. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a year. We're conditioned to it at this point. We know he's ignorant. We know he's racist. We know he's sexist. Yeah. We know he's a complete dickhead. Sure. We know he's a complete buffoon. Right. So at this point, we just know and we're kind of conditioned to it. We're just like, okay, uh, almost one year down. That's bad. Though. The rest of your term to go. Like That's pretty yeah. much it's just like counting down the days until you're out of here. But in terms of Floyd, though, I think he's catching heat because, of course, he agrees with Trump. Mm-hmm. And also he's saying like, oh, well, um, it, it's just how guys talk. Yeah, you're the man. Mm-hmm. But... I get it, but it's like like you were saying. It's like if you get in trouble for that, just say you know my bad. That was bad. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know why Floyd is really catching Floyd that much heat because no, Floyd has a history a of being of abuse and violence towards women. Oh, well, you know what? No, I don't even think it's that more so because that adds to it. That does like, add to it. But mm-hmm. you know, he's made some clue. I'm not gonna call Floyd a clue because I don't know. I haven't heard too many comments, but they, like he's comments. made coon like comments. He's a little suspected coon because he said something about the all lives matter and the black lives matter. Right, the all right. lives matter being, you know, the thing to go because right. I don't know. I don't know well, what I don't remember has. exactly what his comment was, but it's basically he was basically saying all lives matter. So yeah. that's coon and y'all that right there. Then, then you, you got supporting Trump. You look like an asshole. Like, and then you have yeah. your history of violence towards women. Exactly. So it doesn't really help you to even remotely even seem like you're co signing yeah, a statement true, like that. True. That just basically is just like, oh, really, Floyd? Like, right. I mean, well, where are your, where is the money team? Well, enough about Floyd <laughs> because I feel like you don't really give a fuck about black people anyway. He just give a fuck about that dollar, you know, whatever. Um, but so okay, so I know a lot has been going on with ESPN. How's y'all? By the way, how's y'all boycott been doing going? So boycott far? has actually been rather effortless, to be honest. I mean, same here. I don't watch sports at all, so it's another it's weekend. Really, <laughs> it's another okay. Sunday for it me. So I don't. It hasn't really been care. a problem. I actually got like some folks at work who also are just like, nah, I'm not watching. Yeah. I mean, they've kind of been batting in Dover, but I'm like, hey, get your money, make your money off of them, I mean, but don't yeah. let them make money yeah. off of you. Right. So, but I mean, outside of even then, they're still not watching the games. You just see, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But it's just, a lot of people, like last week when the season started, all I see is screenshots and scores. Mm-hmm. I'm like, 
Y'all the same niggas that was hoorahing over the summer, and now all of a sudden, y'all even forgot about this. Like, they don't care. They're going to get there and watch sports. You know, I did see an article that came by that saying that the first week, the opening first week was like the lowest ratings of the first week since, like, you know, the early 2000s. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So you it's know, definitely people like that it. really aren't, okay. like, you know, aren't watching. Like, mm-hmm. I can definitely say I'm not watching. Haven't yeah, watched, right. don't plan on it, and... Now, it Why is you? on, you know, sometimes, and I may glance over, but I'm not about, about to be like, oh, yeah, let me click and see what's going on. I don't, on I can't, I can't stop everybody at my house, but I can't make them do what I do. Right. But I'm not really pressed right. to look. When and I'm not, starts with the individual, though. Yeah, so. for sure, right. for sure. And don't feel discouraged out there, because there's a lot of people that say, you know, just because you don't watch, don't mean they're not making their money. You, do you guys know, I had a person tell me that... They tell their, it was a black man, he tells his son um, that we need white pe- white people. Like, it's nothing you can do that you that don't need, you know, that don't involve needing white people. And I think that's very toxic. And he was saying that along the lines of, you know, if you start watching the NFL, don't mean it will change anything. But there have been several movements that started by individuals. You don't that's need how, that's everybody where to they make start. change. Right. It has to be an individual exactly. willing to make a change. If we all had that same attitude, no one would ever go. Exactly. Just like, what's the point of me doing? No one else is going to do it. You don't know and if anyone else is going to do it. You start with yourself. They might be making their money. They're not making my money. Exactly. That's the whole right. point. You're not making money off of me. Exactly. So, I mean, I can sleep at night because I know that. Worst case scenario, I didn't contribute to any exactly. of this. And I'm not going to. And, and other groups do that too. And whether people call them extra, just like the Jews when Jay-Z said something about the Jews, you know, owning a lot. Mm-hmm. And they was like, oh, he's being anti-Semitic. Just from him mentioning the word Jew. Right. And they may be extra, but they're looking out for their own. They're making right. a statement that if you say something about us, we own that shit. And so we need to be the same way. Honestly, right. but you know, it's people are just, that, that negative connotation is always going to be some pessimistic person who just can't. If you don't want to support it, cool. Just shut up. Don't right. say nothing. If you want to watch, watch. That's your business. But don't discourage someone else or downplay them or, oh, what are you doing it for? It doesn't, don't worry about what it is. Yeah. I mean, because all of these movements that have ever happened in our past, if somebody had that attitude and had discouraged exactly. some of these great civil rights leaders from doing what they did, that we might not be in the situation we're in right now to even mm-hmm. have a voice to speak out against mm-hmm. what's exactly. going on. So, you know, like, it's just looking at the bigger picture, like, and they make so much money, ESPN, off of unemployed black men. You do you you do Honestly. know that right. black men are the most unemployed in the country, and and they watch you know sports, and so they they just feel like they can just say whatever because they're gonna get supported anyway. But we gotta stand for something, you know. Absolutely. And then speaking speaking of black men doing you know being unemployed. You got people like Young Jock out here wearing a dress, talking about he's doing anything. Basically, he's yeah, doing he basically to get TV selling in. his whole soul to get yeah. some sort of attention and some yes. sort of check coming in, and it's it's really really sad because yes. that's a step and fetch it as mentality if I ever seen before. Yes. Like, that is some ultimate cooning right there because that's yes. basically what you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like it's like you're setting, putting off these messages. You're not gay. It's not about wearing a dress because by all means, I don't give a damn what people I mean, wear. you didn't pull that with Fantasia hairstyle. Now okay. you wearing a dress, but you yeah. wonder why people. But it's just like, dude, you're going to the extreme, sir. Just for some money. Well, you should look at internet, internet filter or something like that. Or oh, man. some excuse. I was the, like, the, Brett, come on, man. Regardless of all that, like it's black man, pathetic. black woman, you're smarter than that you're it's smart you pathetic. you started you everything whole, we've done we've started every but everything we've had a whole every other group freaking career you know what i'm saying we it's, taught every group how to do everything so we don't need to uh wear a dress to make money we can right, start a like, business how do you money. feel and my thing is just like how do you even feel like how do you look at yourself in the mirror knowing that hey once upon a time i had an active music career and i understand that these things may not last forever you may mm-hmm. not have had the longevity that you you know, saying desire, but that's that's a business sense, and you being able to do that, and yeah. you've gone from that to this, and you like, how do you right. even like, right. you, you know, know like, that. look at Chamillion there, you wear no be, dress. Right. How can we be sold them. on you when you not really sold on yourself? Right. Like, obviously, that you feel like you got to do these antics for attention and money. It's like you're not sold on your own talent. So why the hell am I gonna be sold? That shit is wild. Right. And my thing, my main issue, other than the deep shit, was that 
That shit look like a motherfucking Clarence Rack David's bridal dress. Oh, like my nigga, if you gonna wear a dress, where are you about to be? And if you gonna wear a dress, wear a nice ass dress. That shit look like it came from Ross. Like you a motherfucking celebrity, do better. Like come on, it. It's really it's been that dress looks so honest. like poorly made. It was bedazzled around here. At least right, that joint definitely look like somebody's homecoming dress. Like if you don't cut. All the shit. That looked like an eighth grade prom dress. Well, it did. It was for the Washington wear, right? dress. Like, where are you going with that? Charlotte so said he had titties in the hips, so he looked good at this, so he had a Go ahead, yo. He did look a little curvy, though. In the that's dress. just really sad. Like, you know, like, I just. Did I, y'all see the picture, though? I definitely saw the picture. I didn't see the picture. I just, it, I, it's I saw really it sad I like, to ahead. see, you know what I'm saying, somebody really just, like. In 10 years, his. Life just spout around. It's just like life comes at you fast. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but it's like this is a level of pathetic that I'm really hoping that I never descend to because this is really sad. Yeah, uh, like, this is this he is looks the, my auntie now, yo. That's that's the dress. Oh my god, that shit looks so really cheap sad. And, just... and it's like for what? For money? Like, no, no, that. I mean like literally, like for you really like. Well, how do you, you know, what, what is, what's happened in your life to where that's even like a proposition for you? Like, yeah, it's really sad. And you, you wow. call yourself, you know, laughing, I guess, to the bank and or whatever. No. But at the end of the day. People are laughing at you. Your They're not dignity is gone. You. Your dignity, you're basically you saying you'll bend over and take a little ass check. Somebody. Cause I'm pretty right. sure that what they paid you, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't mm-hmm. worth the trade off. Like you, it wasn't. you are just. It's pathetic. It's really sad. Oh, that's a sad picture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You like eight kids dad, dog. That's super pathetic. And what you would tell your son? Right. Where's all eight of them kids? What if, like, what if they look at you and be like, oh, my dad does anything for money as long right, as he gets his money. Message. And so what if somebody say, hey, yeah, I know you boy and I, you know you're straight, but yeah, let's do such and such. You know, some it's sexual things. Like, that you do anything that? is right. acceptable for for a check is basically what you're saying and why don't get me wrong because yes money is very necessary you know when it comes to paying your bills maintaining your lifestyle having mm-hmm. things and all that but you gotta have some sort of dignity about yourself and some 100%. sort of cut off point to where it's like you know what this is where i draw the line i'm not willing to do anything in the world for money like that's really sad that he feels like this is acceptable behavior like yeah but moving on um I want to address something that's been heavy in the news about um, DACA, DACA, or DACA, whatever people call it. And it stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And basically, it's an incentive that our government and the Obama administration created to protect children, illegal immigrants' children. So basically, if your mother and father from another country came over here and you were... I think in high school or uh, younger. It was in 16 and it has to be before June 2007. Well, they did it in 2000, right, 12. I don't know what the, the years Something other like than that. that. Yeah. But yeah. I know that if, like, yeah, you, your parents bring you here, it's not your fault that you're here. You didn't come here on your own accord, so they, right. it's like the government protects you. And then a little bit later on, they even started protecting some of the adults. And that was through the Obama administration. So for all the people out there to say Obama can't do anything for specific groups of people, you know, they can't do anything for black people because, you know, that's too specific. He got to do stuff for all people. He's not the president of blacks. He's the president of everybody. Right. But he wasn't the president of the immigrants, but he did something for them. Right. Specifically. That's a deferred action so, for you guys getting deported so that okay. you can stay here and then get those work visas. Right. Exactly. So, so yeah. the, don't say all you black people who say that he did the best he could. He can do specific things for specific groups like he did for the illegal immigrants. And basically what I want to talk about is um, why black people aren't jumping on the bandwagon. Because historically you know that if there's a gay rights issue, we're on the front lines. Uh, Anytime we're talking about minorities, we're talking about black and brown. We're talking about everybody's issues. We're on the front line of everybody's issues. But that shit has changed. Since the uh, election came out, when Donald Trump became president, we didn't come out there to the polls like that. We took the capes off. We not Captain Save Them anymore, and we're more focused on our issues. You still got some black folks out there that's capable for everybody, but for the most part, we're like, yeah, you know, as Tariq Nasheed would say, you know, we out, hold your own nuts. You know, we got our issues, you got your issues. It's unfortunate, you know, to see families being separated and deported and all of these things it's very unfortunate nobody should have to go through that but at the end of the day if it was happening to black people they would not do that so what y'all think about um 
the whole DACA uh, Trump trying to, um, I guess, uh, repeal the DACA situation. Well, he rescinded it, but I think that it got like the, the rescission got delayed by like six months or something mm -hmm. in Congress because they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with these people. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I feel like what he's going to ultimately do, and I mean, I could be wrong, but it's just, it goes in, in, in the general Trump way of moving just seems like his objective is always to just undermine Obama, Obama, Obama. at any given moment mm -hmm. that he can. So I feel like ultimately what he's probably going to do is slap another label on this yeah. and then try to keep it going, you know, and yeah. it's under a whole nother identity is something that is derived of Trump. And that seems to be what he does is just put a Trump stamp on it and keep it, and, you know, make it seem like it's his concept. Mm -hmm. But then again, as vocal as he's been against immigrants you know i wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he went ahead and you know it could go either way to be honest yeah that's but, what i was gonna say i don't think he's gonna like do like he was gonna do obamacare because he's just gonna put another stamp on that to say to take the credit for him this i really don't think he fucked with knowing him. trump they gonna be out here just even though him. he's just probably he i mean like how legal is your wife if we you know like that's that's now you know he ain't gonna <laughs> ever put the, nope. the mirror on himself to exactly like on and himself. that's what's so wild that's, is because you're just... married to an immigrant you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying if we, if we want to keep it hunted but it's suddenly you have all these issues these same immigrants who came across that mexican border to help us when hurricane harvey struck mm -hmm. and now you got all these conflicts with you were really ready to turn down the help Mm -hmm. right. And you know, because of your disdain for immigrants, which is super weird in, in, a, in a country founded by immigrants. By but you know, I mean, yeah. what, what do I know? You know, right. a regular black person. But <laughs> realistically, it's, it's it's so contradictory and stupid and ridiculous to even. Why are you touching this? Like, I mean, it's really no sense of urgency. You know, he's very racist to other groups. Um, this is not the most racist thing he's done. He's done racist things towards black people as well throughout his life. You know, his him and his father, you know, his father being arrested at the Klan's rally and well, at some Klan's, Ku Klux Klan yeah, event. And yeah, and and him not wanting to rent his properties to black people, you know, and sued and they won. Like the labor so, in this country is 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 built upon the backs of immigrants if we being honest here so it's like what are you what the but, hell are you what are you what are you doing i mean uh, i really i really like i said i sympathize and empathize in however many words there are to describe that i am sorry for those people however black people have our own specific issues and let's be very 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 clear most people who benefit from that DACA thing like i think about 70 or 80 percent is people of Hispanic descent. Yeah, uh -huh. people will say, of course, they're going to say, you know, oh, black people benefit from that too. What about the Africans? They are trickled down at the bottom of the list. Right. Literally. Most Hisp people of Hispanic backgrounds are benefiting from that. And when they come a lot over of here... them are illegal. Right. And, and when they come over here, let's be quite honest, they classify themselves as white. As white. And that because they don't have, we don't have a Hispanic, uh, they, we don't always have a Hispanic box. However, but they're more, uh, if you be, want to be real, they identify, they could identify more closely with Native white. Americans than white. But they classify as white. And by default, they take on those white ideals. So as black people, I think that we should kind of worry about our own stuff and be like, you know, uh, we'll pray for you, but keep it moving because they, they be in large numbers, they really don't fuck with us. A lot of them voted for Trump, so they will have to take that. Right. I think a lot of them don't know any better either. And I feel and like well, then, they okay. kind of need to be a little bit more educated as far as these sort of issues go. So maybe they can make a little bit more informed decisions because I feel like a lot of times they're not even really aware you know, of a lot of these issues. But, I mean, I definitely get it because as black folks, yeah, we do have a lot of our own stuff going mm -hmm. on. The only downside is when things like this get away, get I me mean, like, when when they, when they get away with things like this, mm -hmm. it just, like, makes it, 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 it becomes more acceptable for them to get away with the shit they do to us. So it's yeah. kind of just, like, mm -hmm. all lumping in and it's, like, you letting this one thing go through because it's, like, it's not really us. But then when it is us, because precedent shows that they've done this mm -hmm. to people, you know, minorities or people of color, then it's, like, wow, you know, then we get up in a world, but it's, like, it's become a pattern. So it's, right. like, at some point you got to put your foot down, like, okay, look. This 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 is a country founded on immigrants. None of us are native. We want to be absolutely honest. Hell, the Mexicans are probably more native than we are. If we, if we, I mean, well, then they I mean, are. Technically, technically, yes, because they they really 
uh, their bloodline is more aligned with Native American. And they inhabited mm -hmm. this country before um, the Europeans did. So it's just like, I mean, it goes e either way. The powers that be that do this, mm -hmm. it's like, you check your ancestry, it's not American. You know, like, right. so right. it's kind of ridiculous to turn your nose up at anybody of color and feel like, you know, for me, it just kind of turns it, it, it resonates with me under the same uh, umbrella as you get in those go back to Africa comments and mm -hmm. stuff. Well, see, here's the difference and why this doesn't resonate with me. Because, like I said, a lot of them voted for Trump. That's number one. And two, a lot of them de definitely do take on the ideals of the white supremacists. They look at us and in order and to be like, okay, well, white people shit on them, so we're going to shit on them. It's a lot of Hispanics that don't like black people. But still I'm just saying, them, you still use the word nigga. That's very weird. I mean, yeah, some of them do, you know, and I'm not talking yeah, about the Afro Latinos or whatever, because I'm talking your, about the white Hispanics. You gotta blame your coon compadres for that one, because right. we're giving these people these nigga passes, right. and they thinking it's sweet because mm -hmm. you're hanging out with that group Very of coon ass people right. who who okay with it, and you think that shit is tolerable in all audiences, and you find out the hard way that the rest of us not rocking. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But I mean, um, nearly, I mean, um, uh, the power nomics. Dr. Claude Anderson, he articulate, articulated in the book Powernomics that uh, immigrant issues, I mean, they have to fight their own fight, but that really, them being able to come over here, it really doesn't benefit us. No, it really it doesn't. Really doesn't. It, it doesn't. Dilutes, uh, it, it dilutes us as a minority because before a lot of immigrants came over here, we were the top priority minority. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, so absolutely it does. Here. And to the point yeah. where you see it in the schools where everything is bilingual now. So exactly. it's like you're getting right. these forms and one side is English and one side is Spanish. And there's like a whole lot of catering to that, which is absolutely mm -hmm. true. There's a lot of catering to that. And it kind of takes away from the issues that we are dealing with as black people. So, no, I, I definitely agree. I can see both sides of it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, I got we got to take care of our issues as black folks. It's like I do okay. sympathize. Absolutely. I feel bad because it's like you come here. Granted, you did come here illegally. Some of you are seeking some sort of asylum for whatever you were dealing with, mm -hmm. where you came from. I totally understand that. They mm -hmm. call this the land of the free. You feel like it's an opportunity. And a lot of them do take jobs that a lot of us kind of turn our nose up at. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're willing to get down for your crown, you know, by all means, knock yourself yes. out. However, understand we that can't fight everybody's there, battle. But there is a certain, you know, a, there's always going to be that risk that comes with it when you go to some, you know, when you migrate somewhere else yes. illegally right. like that. If they take action, you kind of got to deal with that. It's kind of like it's kind of like going to a, sneak into a concert. And you know you didn't buy the ticket, right? You, you get, get sorted out. You get sorted out. out. You gonna right. fight? You, you might have saw some of the songs, <laughs> but you know, like you. Yeah. They, but to your point, though, Yada, about about um, you know, them having taken the jobs that we won't take. Claude Anderson. I mean, the book is is phenomenal. Uh, uh, Black Power, White Wealth, and Power Nomics and stuff. But he uh, he also talked about. Yeah, they take the jobs, and that, that's a good point. That's a fair point. But at the end of the day, those jobs that they occupy now was occupied by black people. And the reason why we won't occupy them now is that the, the pay now is so low because they can take advantage of people oh, not being, being undocumented. Absolutely. So, of course, we're yeah, not about to get them the $3 have. an hour. We're not going to work for that. We're like, we've been here. We're right. not about to, to right. degrade and work, downgrade and work for three four dollars an hour but they don't have another choice yeah, so exactly. yes they're going to take those jobs that we won't take you know what i'm saying and so and so because uh, a lot of people say that and i don't think that they are they're saying they're like like we're lazy or whatever whatever but people forget that black people kind of built this country you know what i'm saying from the ground really, yeah, up kind of, sort of literally yeah like I mean, actually free. physically yeah, built this country like right. with our hands like yeah so i know absolutely though that's absolutely true and um yeah it gets to a point where it's like i mean well that does make sense though because it's like you've been here and then when they they decide to you know kind of make it you know downgrade the the mm -hmm. job the pay and i mean that's that's very true though that is very true i mean it's unfor it is unfortunate you know because it's you're you know you by that by this juncture in life you're thinking about people who migrated here who were who were kids or teenagers before 2007 you know that's 10 right. years ago these people are adults now so it's like at this yeah. juncture, like you've probably started a family you've probably you know what i'm saying more than likely so yeah it's like yeah that deportation does kind of hit hard it's just 
the logic behind it is always is really what irks me more than anything because you know why he's doing it and he's just doing it because he has right. his own personal issues and because we allowed ourselves somehow to have this overtly racist ass president I will say because I mean I'm pretty sure plenty of them in the past have also had their issues but they were just a lot more discreet about it with him exactly. the, and, and I mean and you can argue you know that logic too as well because you feel like oh well the devil you know is better than the devil you don't mm -hmm. but honestly no because when you have people that are blatantly overtly racist like him it lets other racists feel like it's okay mm -hmm. to be out in the open with it and that's what creates all these other issues so when he's so blatant about it, all the other closet races are like, well, he's out front with I'm about to Then they start being over it. Then you have these violent encounters because we're not playing that shit. Let me give you um, the breakdown of how many, like the, give me, let me give you a general idea of the people who benefit. So for the more, okay, so the most is El Salvador um, immigrants. And let's be clear, black, I mean, white people allow them to classify as white because it boosts their numbers. People are like, well, why, why would white people allow Hispanics to increase, I mean, to classify as white? Doesn't that go against the grain of white supremacy? No, because in order for them to maintain the, the, major, the majority of the population, they need a little help. Because let's be clear, it's many articles saying that they're dying faster than they're being born and they are pretty much mother nature is kind of weaning them out of there right. so we think that they are so much more of us but they're really not and and i think that white uh, hispanics mostly are uh have african uh bloodlines mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right. than, than white so so let's be clear on that but twenty eight thousand, uh roughly are El Salvadorian, then you get next up under that is Guatemala, then Honduras, then Peru, then South Korea. And we all know Asians mm. don't fuck with no black people. So for us to just be mm. on the forefront or just protesting or fighting for this DACA shit, like what are we really doing? Asians, you already know. You go to an Asian store, they're like, yeah, where your money at? Oh, okay, yeah, they keep it, they keep that shit moving. Right. You know, they don't, they don't really fuck with us like that. Um, Philippines, Colombia, Brazil, you know, then all the way down, and mind you, there's way more uh, on the list. And way, way down, you got Chile and Ghana and, you know, Pakistan, but more African uh, people. And you're down at the thousands at this point. So the black people that benefit from DACA is not as much. The majority is Hispanics. They really don't fuck with us. And sometimes, you know, we cannot dwell on the small percentage. Some people just gonna have to take an L for the larger picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just understand why black people aren't coming out in droves to support this movement uh, by people that really shit on us. It doesn't really resonate with me at all, honestly. I mean, my folks came here legally, so they're good. And I don't, it's just, I, I, I just really don't care much about it, honestly. Sounds bad, but I'm just being honest. I mean, no, that's and it's to be honest, I mean, when speaking personally, it's like you feel bad only because you know, like there, there are families that are getting divided, and but I mean, realistically, I haven't put too much of my own. Yeah, know, it's like, like oh, I mean, I feel bad. Don't get me wrong, it, but it's or like, like research into it. I mean, this is things that I've seen in passing, but I haven't just sat here and like fought right. this cause. If we're being only honest, it's cool. but let this have been five or ten years ago. A lot of people, a lot of people, the black people dealing with the civil rights issue would lump this into the struggle. And I just, I, I appreciate the de decrease in numbers of people who are fighting for immigration. Right. Well, there was um, 60, I mean 29% versus black people's 8% who voted Republican for the, for, um, the election for Trump. So 8% of us, I, I don't know who the fuck you are. No, actually, you know what? The guy, the black guy from CNN, I forget his name, was London something, who was crying after. Did you hear about that? <laughs> when Trump was, uh, basically said that both sides were wrong yeah. uh, with the protesters, the ones, the protests that were anti, I guess, Nazi group that was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were basically both equally wrong where they were on the same side. But anyway. There are some black people who voted for Trump, but it was like 8%, 88%. We were the highest, uh, basically the highest population who voted against. Democrat, who voted against 
uh, Trump over the whites, over Asians, over, I guess, everybody, the others. But Hispanics voted at 29%. 29% versus our eight. So, needless to say, hold your own nuts. Take care of your own issues. Take care of your own stuff while we take care of ours. We're not going to march against you. We're not going to vote right, for you, you to be moment, deported. But it's just like. But we're going to just be pro us. We're just going to be indifferent. We're going to be so pro, pro us. We're going to be so pro us that we will not even think about you, honestly. That's fucked up. Jesus Christ. I mean, the, I mean hey. <laughs> We can still make tacos. No, I can't say that. I cannot say that. <laughs> they not going nowhere. But no, I mean, I'm just saying. Hold so your we keep Taco Tuesday? If they go away? Boy, bye. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, but yeah, the, just the, the oh, long story short, you know, uh, it's good. I appreciate the fact that we are focused on our own, on our own issues because it's not like we got a little bit to worry about. We got a lot to worry about. And so, by we don't need no distractions. You know, I feel bad for those people, those individuals. And you already know, it's been individuals who said news uh, uh, stories that came out the saying, oh, this couple, this family voted for Trump, and then they're getting deported or whatever. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm yeah. just saying. And they real messy for doing yeah. that, but it's kind of it's kind of like. It puts everything in perspective. No, nah, it does, though. It does. So, for all those people out there, you know, we very empathetic, sympathetic to your situation. However, you know. You, y'all, group, go ahead and make sure y'all fight for y'all issues and we're going to make sure we fight for ours. What do you say? Take care of home. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Might not have been in that context. Right, right, right. Hey, right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's been today's show. Do y'all, are we missing anything? Um, are we going to talk about Kamika Jenkins? Yes. Kamika! Oh, my God. Like, so I can honestly. R.I.P. though. Like, really just, like, it's so much like it's and I really I feel like I saw it from beginning to where we are right now mm -hmm. like very beginning and I mean I don't really I can't remember that girl's Twitter handle who kind of sparked it off but girl um you fucked up with this one sis like you really did no shade but like the amount of speculation that, what what this is the thing she's going in the hotel freezer two something in the morning you know yeah her friends call it four something in the morning like hey we got the car we got the phone we can't find her her mom come up there around five no you know i'm somewhere between four thirty five o'clock in the morning like hey, i can't find my daughter they're knocking on doors you call the police on this woman told her she had to have a missing persons report for y'all to help her find her by the time y'all get that paperwork and go look for her that girl is really frozen so what disturbed me was the fact that how drunk, first of all, how drunk she was, how intoxicated she was, and the fact that some activist oh saw the sick. footage before the because family. Because he misrepresented himself. Right. And oh. he talked about the footage without the family. There were three videos. There was her stumbling in the hallway. Is sick. There was no video released of her actually walking to the, into the uh, freezer. Um, they said the freezer wasn't on. I don't. I don't know. It's I didn't a lot see that it was on. on. I heard that it wasn't in on. use. I heard that it yeah. wasn't in use, but that they. I mean, it was on, but it was. They weren't using it for anything. Like it was empty. Well, that activist, you need these hands, like real life. You you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Like you really went to the police station. Mm -hmm. You misrepresented yourself. You told them mm -hmm. you were there on behalf of a family who has not spoken to you. Right. And the police, you just took this man word for it. you. Showed him footage. You right. haven't even shown that girl's mother. Right. And then he goes and, and does a press conference. Like yeah. Yeah, well, it showed her walking to the freezer by herself. Who's and, and a lot you? of a lot of articles have come out oh. saying that these videos show her walking through a freezer, and none of the videos I show seen her a walking single through video. The it show a video walk her and walk through the kitchen. Right, it doesn't show her walking, walking into the freezer. a freezer. And so, they could have very well released that if that was to happen. I think that there's foul play. I think that all the internet detectives out out there, you know, you should definitely wait for the toxicology report and the autopsy. Before before yeah. you speak further because to be it's too many different stories some people say she was and that's why her that, mother said, that's her, mother said that's that so. her friend's stories have changed so many times that's why she feels like somebody played a role in this because she said the stories haven't been the same that she's gotten right. from the friend but did she get raped I don't think she got well, raped. I don't. No okay. one knows. That's, all that's, if that, if she was raped, what it was in? What it, it must have been in the freezer? I, rape in that room? Not at all. All the answers will come out if they when they release the autopsy and the toxicology report. And um, hopefully they release and more than the just details. these snippets. These snippets don't really tell anything. All it shows is that she has something in her system that 
altered her mm-hmm. her mechanical skills and her and her judgment apparently because you walking in the walls and stuff until i yeah. hear from her mom's mouth that yeah. she walked in that freezer i don't want to hear it like yeah i i definitely i don't want to hear anything until i get those reports so we get we, the public gets to see those reports you know shout uh, uh you know rp to kanisha jenkins jenkins and you know uh condolences go to her family really and their friends and stuff like that yeah. It's very unfortunate situation. You don't always need alcohol to have a good time. So, you know, uh, we're going to close out uh, the show, but we're going to definitely follow up on this story on the next episode or whenever they come out with the reports and everything like that. So thank you so much for watching. This is such a great show. Um, Make sure you subscribe and follow us on our social media because we want to see you there. You know, we want to see what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Comment. You want to get this dialogue going. Exactly. And then make sure you comment and like and whatever. And we'll shout you out on the next show. Especially if you're showing love and sharing the video. And just let us know. Like, hey, we shouted out the video. We shared the video. And or we uh, liked it. Or so we subscribed. We'll definitely shout you out and let you know uh, that we appreciate the support. So thank you so much for watching again. And we will see you on the next show. This is a great show live. Peace.